Today, I will be presenting about Chapter 8, Law and Court Cases Pertaining to Children, Offender and Victim. At Point 3, Summary of the Family, Law Cases. For our table content, first one is Ex Party Crows, 1838. The second one is Stanley v. Inos, 1972. The third one is Sentoski v. Carmel, 1982. And the fourth one is Dishani v. Winnebago, County Department of the Social Service, 1989. For the introduction, the court have consistently affirmed the right of parents to take care and discipline their children, but the court have begun in defining what constitutes reasonable punishment. As a result, cases that can be for the court pretending to parents being accused of being excessively harassed or physically indisciplining of their children were decided on a case-by-case -case basis. A more detailed explanation of the legal issue and the court explanation of its decision for each cases presented above are given on the following pages. Summary of the cases. The first cases is at point 3.1, ex parte Crows, 1938. Mary Ann was committed to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court by her mother due to the unmanagement reason. The court upheld the commitment stating that there would be no trial due to the applying of parent patriarch principle and her father appealed the decision on the ground that she was committed on the decision made by a justice of peace without being given a jury trial. The court stated that the object of charity if reformation by training its imam to industry by imbuing their mind with principle of morality and religion and furnishing them by separating them from the corrupting influence of improper associated. Second one is at point 3.2, Stanley v. Illinois, 1973. John and Peter lived together intermittently for 18 years and they were unmarried but have three children. When John Stanley dead, present to the illness law, the children automatically become the ward of state. The children placed in the foster care without hearing being held on the issue of the fitness of Peter as a father. Due to this situation, Peter appealed this to the U.S. Supreme Court due to the illness court did not violate his right of his children due to the process pursuant to the 14th Amendment. Peter was entitled to hearing on his fitness as a parent before his children could be taken back by him. The court claimed that the state interest in caring for Stanley children is minimal if it is legally determined that an outwarded parent is a fit parent. The third case is at point 3.3, point 3, Santoski v. Kremel, 1982. A New York court terminated a family right to the children to have custody on them due to the permanently neglect reason by the family. The children were removed from his family by a county social service. This case appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court and the court ruled in the favor of Santoski parent appeal. The right of Santoski to provide care to these children were restored and the children were returned to the Santoski. Court decision on these cases reaffirmed the fundamental right of parents to provide care and discipline to their children except these rights are temporarily removed due to the cause of the parent are untitled. The fourth case is at point 3.4, the Shani v. Winnebago County Department of Social Service, 1989. Joshua was born in 1979, but in 1980, his parents divorced and he was awarded custody to his father. Then moved to the Wincosin and he was beaten by his father over the three next year. Social worker received complaint that Randy Dishani, Joshua's father, was abusing him until Joshua was beaten and suffered permanent brain damage. Joshua Dishani and his mother pursued to the UCS section 1983, alleging that the Winnebago County DDS have deprived Joshua from his liberty without due process of the law in violation of his right. The U.S. Supreme Court claimed that the state failure to protect an individual against private violence does not constitute a violation of the due process clauses. The next cases is at point 3.5, Troxil v. Granville in 2000. Tommy and Brett in relationship but not married and they have two daughters named Isabel and Natalia. These two kids have grandparents named Jennifer and Gary Toxer. Tommy and Brett were separate, and Brett would brought their children regularly back home for a visitation until the day he commits suicide. Tommy informed that she wished to limit the terms visiting Brett's parents. Troxil petitioned to the court for his right as them as the grandparent. The court for a visitor gave the right to the grandparents to have visitation one week per month, but due to the mother, Tommy Granville, appealed this to the Washington court, the court reversed the lower court visitation order whereby the grandparents do not obtain visitation of their grandchildren. That's all from me. Thank you.